Hi guys, happy Monday. Finally, it was such a long weekend. Holy crap. I mean, long, long, long. Every day felt like a Sunday or a Friday. It was so strange, but everything feels really good today, though, because it's the full moon. So, we're going to go back into George Pickingill and his covens, the nine covens. We already covered the nine covens. Um, and then it's going to go, I mean, it, it gets really, 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 really interesting. It goes a lot into Gerald Gardner. So, this guy is, like, dissecting everything from every, you know, path of uh, possible of traditional craft of, you know, Wicca and, you know, why Wicca is not traditional craft and why we don't really like it. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so, um, what is today, 30th? Um, 30 days of Chico being completely good and happy, acting like a puppy. You guys, I am so thankful and grateful for all of your guys' love, the, the support, the prayers, you know, the candles, all of it, the, you know, the donations for his surgery and everything. I don't want to get into it because I'm going to, I get cry, I'll cry. But yeah, uh, you, you, animal lovers, you guys know. So, yeah, I, it's just, it's amazing. It's incredible. I love it. But yeah, so euthana euthanasia, whatever you call, however you say that, is not even in the picture anymore. So, that's... I mean, that was the best thing that, you know, the vet told me. I was like, oh my god. I cried, so. She's like, it's okay. I'm like, no, it's not okay. I'm so happy. Anyways. Alright. Okay, so, we left off with, predictably, the contents of these articles has caused considerable debate and controversy. Well, of course it does. Everything does. If you go to bed, everybody's gonna wake up mad. That's how the world works. However, Liddell's what is this? Critics have not realized that many of the more um, sensational stories about Picking Hill, especially those about the Golden Dawn, were craft legends passed down by his elders in the family tradition. Unfortunately, this was not made clear at the time, and has therefore led to much confusion, misunderstanding, and minister pretation. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I mean, this guy is very controversial. I like him, kind of. I, I do. He's very controversial. He's an, an, an enigma in himself. So I love enigmas in themselves. So, now Bill Liddell's presentation of historical witchcraft based on what his elders told him was very different from the version in popular Wiccan books. Well, of course, it's not Wicca. So in his correspondence with Professor, Professor Ronald Hutton of Bristol University, uh, Bill Liddell claimed that the witch cult Proper. Oh, I like that proper. The witch cult proper. Just gives it a twang. I like it. Emerged in 15th century France as a result of popular disenchantment with the Roman Catholic Church. Doesn't surprise me much, does it you guys? I don't think so. Didn't think so. So, the early French covens were, he said, connected with the stonemasons who built the Gothic cathedrals such as Notre Dame and Charters. Or Chartres. Chartres? Char Chartres. I don't know if that's French or not. Notre, no, no, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. We say Notre Dame here because we have... That's that's our... Uh, if that gives you a little indication of where I am, a Notre Dame is our home team. For bass, base, football. <laughs> base, bass, football. So yeah, American football. Well... But yeah, the Notre Dame, yeah, it's actually, it's built on an ancient pagan temple. So, both churches built on ancient sites of pagan worship. So the Masons, he said, understood the occult lore of the geomantic forces and had built cathedrals and churches on ley lines and at power centers in the countryside. So that is why it's so important for us as traditional witches when we are becoming and when we are expanding our... Uh, are in our ourselves, our consciousness outside into the landscape, to get in contact with the fairy folk, with the uh, other world, beyond the hedge, between, betwixt. That is why that is so important. So I don't even know why I just said all that. So, but yeah. Oh, that's why they're built on. Okay, so I understand. I understood what I said in my head. That didn't make much sense, anyways. So the stonemasons. Um, the 
Champenage and the medieval French witches allegedly both followed, this is good, a Luciferian tradition and they shared an allegiance to Lucifer as the light bearer. Now this is completely not even biblical. So they refuted the Roman Catholic Church's concept of the rebel archangel as a satanic being and instead believed that he represented the indwelling spirit in the human body. Now, the myth of Lucifer was seen as the incarnation of divinity in mortal flesh, or the descent of spirit into matter. <laughs> and that is how they describe Jesus. Likewise, the biblical story of the Watchers or the Fallen Angels mating with the Daughters of Men also reflected the um, same mystery. So, in the latter forms of speculative masonry, King Nimrod, I can't believe that's his name, but it is Nimrod, uh, the biblical mighty hunter and builder of the Tower of Babel, was allegedly substituted for Lucifer to avoid accusations of devil worship, being leveled at Oh, the Freemasons. Liddell claimed that many traditional old craft covens he knew that were still operating today reverted Lucifer as a Christ-like who was the savior and redeemer of humankind. So, yeah. If you guys go back and watch my videos, um, oh, um, God versus Lucifer, which literally made me sick for two years. So, um, I was very disturbed for two years after doing that because I did read the Bible. Um, in its entirety, and I just, it's disgusting to me. It just made me so sick and depressed. I was literally like, I'm like, I can't even get out of bed. I was that perturbed. So, now it is interesting that Bilidel connected Freemasonry with the medieval witch cult, and that many traditional witches believe that the old craft was influenced by Middle Eastern ideas. Now, in um, 1737, Chevalier Andrew Ramsey, Ramsey, a prominent Scottish Freemason, prepared a lecture to give to the members of the Grand Lodge of France in Paris. Oh, I want to go to Paris. Anyways, unfortunately the government censor refused to post it and the talk was never given. In the lecture, Ramsey was to have claimed that during the Crusades, a form of Freemasonry was brought back from the Middle East by knights returning to Europe although he also stated that the Masonic Order was um, founded in remote antiquity. We have already mentioned um, that Tubal Cain, as revered by Robert Cochran, and his coven, and by other modern traditional witches, were important to the early speculative lodges of Freemasons. Hmm. And in my family, we... A lot of the people on my father's side are actually Freemasons, and they are a part of the Masonic Lodge, which, I mean, every city has a very, like, a weird one. And I just, I, I would like to see inside. I would like to go inside, but I don't think I'm allowed. I don't know how it works. If you don't have enough money, then they won't take you. So, it's all about money. So... Now, in um, 1775, another Freemason called William Hutchinson published a book called Spirit of Masonry, in which he stated that the Crusaders in the Holy Land formed secret societies. Now, the Crusaders' priests, and here it seems possible Hutchinson was referring to the monks who were the Knights Templar, were possessed of the mysteries of masonry and the knowledge of the ancient arts and the universal language which survived the confusion of Babel. What is that universal language? So, it is a well-known fact that the Templars um, finance the building of many of the Gothic cathedrals in France. So also that the historical and traditional witch cults, uh, actually they share many of its symbols with Freemasonry. So, it does. We, we see that. You'll see that if you ever go to, like, if you pass by a Masonic Lodge, you'll see the, the symbols, the Eye of Horus. Uh, we have the pentagram, we have, uh, we have the cross, which is actually uh, pagan, we have, um, we have all kinds of stuff. So, these magical symbols included the skull and crossbones, um, the sword, the mill or hammer, the cockerel on a pillar, 
a ladder, the five-pointed star or pentagram, the six-pointed star or the hexagram, the seven-pointed star, the sun disk, and the crescent moon and crossed keys. And the crossed keys are representative of Hecate. And if we take that back to um, what we went over earlier in um, the Chubalcane part of this video series, then you can see that um, the witch goddess was pointing more towards Hecate more and more as I read. So that's the goddess that they really revered in the witch cults. So, now the cockerel-headed uh, Gnostic god Abraxas and the symbol of the skull and bones were also important symbols to the Templars. Now in traditional witchcraft, a human skull obviously represents the god in the circle and is used as an auricular device. So, we're going to leave off there because this is getting better and better. I love love this. Okay, let me see where I am. Alright. If I have room to write, you guys. I think I do. I might. Sorry, guys. I really need to label or number my pages on my grimoires. Okay. So yeah, it, it's really interesting. It is really, really interesting. And I really, really, like, I wonder what is beneath um, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, however you want to say it, here, um, not too far from where I live. So I don't know if there's another, I really honestly think there's another one somewhere else in, like, Europe probably not the one this that they built here but everything points to um, ancient pagan worship because of the symbolism and you can just see it and every every church is built on something sacred I believe from pagan origin but I won't bore you guys with that. <laughs> that's our history lesson for the day, and that's pretty interesting. And now I'm just now I'm interested in French witchcraft, my my Romany side more so, and so I want to know. I want to know more. I'm gonna have to dig, dig, and dig, and see what can I can come up with with my Romany side. I have got to get in contact with my cousin who lives in um, Europe. I don't know if you guys know anybody named Nadia Komenich. She is a famous gymnast. Um, yeah, so yeah, I really want to get in contact with her, no idea how to, she's like a first cousin, literally a first, second cousin, and yeah, she's a gold medalist, Olympic gymnast, and I know she, yeah, she's the Romanian side of me, and that is where I want to get into and see, you know, the Romani, the gypsies, to see where, you know, what she knows, if she knows anything about it, so, she's probably thinking, because I did send her a tweet, a, a direct message DM and she you know you can do that with some people and uh, luckily I was able to do it with her and I'm thinking oh my god she's not gonna know who I am who, who is this person why yeah so I'm just waiting on that for the Romany side and to see what yeah where else I can go with this so it's just I mean I'm getting even more interested and I have more questions so I'm done babbling so um, I will see you guys tomorrow I love you all with all of my heart um, thank you guys for all the amazing comments, um, all the amazing everything that you guys do. I love you guys with all of my heart, always. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. All my love, from Venus all the way back down to the bottom of my heart and the top two. Um, and happy full moon. Um, I think this is actually Hecate's full moon. I don't know. I've seen that somewhere today, I think. I don't know. But I'm going to shut up, so I love you guys. <laughs> Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So everybody have a good day and please be safe.